Hello. Alrighty, we're back. Oh, we're back. Okay, let's do this. I'm excited. Let's do this. Okay, back to the light, a little a light in the attic. Amazing poems. Oh, it's been such a good read. Again, I am sorry if you are frustrated with my reading skills. I was with you on that. Just bear with me with my progress because there will be progress and I'm excited to see it and watch it and just continuously watch me improve and grow. So I hope you are improving and growing in things and skills that you wish that you were better in. Work hard and you will achieve it. So let's do this. All right, what if last night while I lay thinking here with what ifs crawled around in my ear my prayer and pranced and partied all night long and sang their same old what if song. What if I'm dumb in school? What if they've closed the swimming pool? What if I get beat up? What if there's a there's poison in my cup? What if I start to cry? What if I get sick and die? What if I flunk that test? What if green hair grows on my chest? What if nobody likes me? What if a bolt of lightning strikes me? What if I don't grow taller? What if my head starts getting smaller? What if the fish won't bite? What if the wind tears up my kite? What if they start a war? What if my parents get divorced? What if I tear fear? What if I tear my pants? What if I never learn to dance? Everything seems swell. And then the nighttime, what if strikes again? I feel like most people have these. Um, I have them all the time. Um, mine don't always happen just at night. It happens throughout the day. That's just life. So with that being said, when you have what ifs come in your head, just remember, just strike them dead. <laughs> Oh, I'm on the roll. Okay. Anywho. Anyways, yes. If you have what ifs in your head, just strike them dead. Because those what ifs are going to stop you from doing whatever you want to do. Like, I'm starting knitting a lot and making little projects. And I have all these what ifs in my head. But... I've had them in my head for a while now. What if I don't make it? What if I'm not good enough? What if, what if, what if? But you never know until you try. Just remember that. You will always be a loser if you never try. When you try, you're an automatic winner. Anyways, next, Sour Face Anne. Sour Face Anne with your chin on your in your hand haven't you ever been pleased? You used to complain that you had no fur, that you had no fur coat, and now you complain of the fleas. So if you have a fur coat and you wind up with fleas, you can't be complaining if you were complaining about not having a fur coat. Yet I don't know why there would be fleas on a fur coat when you can just wash it, but. Anyways, just, just don't, just, just please, Ugh, no, 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 not thinking, no, okay, next, <laughs> the climber. A mountain climbing exploration took us to these dis, uh, distant peaks where no one ever has been before. Was it my imagination? Did I feel this mountain move or did I hear it snore? <laughs> the little people climbing on a big people's face. That's, that's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Um, yeah, I, that's interesting. I don't know why there's people using someone's face as a mountain unless it's a metaphor of Stepping on people to get what you want in life, which is a no-no. Never do that. 
That is not how you succeed in life. You do not step on people to get better and they're like get higher up. You work hard, you dedicate yourself, your time, your dedication, all of that will, will push you up there. You do not step on people to get there. If that's what they're trying to go after. Anyways, next. Rockabye. Rockabye baby in a treetop. Don't you know a treetop is no safe place to rock. And who put you up there in your cradle too? Baby, I think someone down here got it in for you. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Someone put the baby up there because they got it in for him. That's, I mean, in a rockabye baby, in a treetop, when the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bell breaks, the branch breaks, the baby will fall. Down will come baby, cradle and all. No one's down there catching that baby. Don't be thinking that baby's gonna be safe because we all know what happens to that baby. That person's out there to get this baby. They're out there. They're coming to get this baby. They put him up in that tree. <laughs> Just saying. Oh my God, I need a life. Anyways, next. <laughs> the little boy and the old man. Said the little boy, sometimes I drop my spoon. Said the little old man. I do that too. The little boy whispered, I wet my pants. I do, I do that too, laughed the old little old man. Said the little boy, I often cry. The old man nodded, so do I. But worst of all, said the boy, it seems grown-ups don't pay attention to me. And he felt the warmth of a wrinkled old hand. I know what you mean, said the little old man. Holy, holy, okay. Woo uh, that's a, that's a, that's a gut wrencher. Okay, because I have always said little kids and elderly people are one and the same. This poem proves it. Or just proves that they have the same thought process as me. Said the little boy, something I drop, sometimes I drop my spoon. Said the little old man, I do that too. The little boy whispered, I wet my pants. I do that too, laughed the little old man. Said the little boy, I often cry. The old man nodded, so do I. But worst of all, said the boy, it seems grown-ups don't pay attention to me. And he felt the warmth of the wrinkly old hand I know what you mean, said the little old man. I just want to cry. Like, oh my gosh. See, I always, I always was just so bad. So bad going to see my grandparents in their home and having all these other people around there, all the other elderly people that live there. They... They don't have, a lot of them don't have family that come see them. And it, it really breaks my heart because it's like, Nana and Grandpa means so much to me. And I don't know what I would have done without them growing up. Like, they have been there for me time and time again. Never failed. And so it's like, I, I couldn't imagine not being there for them and not like going to see them and talk to them. But my co I have cousins who never talk to them, never message them, never go see them, nothing. And it breaks my heart because I hear my nana and grandpa talking about it. And they tell me how upset they are and how they don't feel like their grandkids really love them for them and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh my 
my God, my heart, I can't take this. Like, my own cousins don't even really fully see my grandparent. And it just, oh, heart-wrenching. Okay, I gotta stop before I cry. All right, next, surprise. Okay, this should be good. My grandpa went to Maryland Beach and sent us back a turtle each. And then he went to Cockamunda and mailed a real live cockatoo. From Rio and Iguana came, a smelly goat arrived from Spain. Now he's in India, you see. My grandpa always thinks of me. Aww. And he gave him a big, big package of something. Let's see, it says, um, special delivery, fragile, airmail, postage due. Handle with care, um, help him keep in cool, dry place, perishable, this end up, open here, and there's eyeballs. So it's some sort of animal. I am thinking from India it is an elephant because I think that's supposed to be the trunk, the eyes, the head, the body and the feet. A little bit. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Next, Ticklish Tom. Did you hear about Ticklish Tom? He got tickled by his mom. Wiggled and jiggled and fell on the floor. Laughed and rolled right out of the door. All the way to school and then he got tickled by his friends. Laughed till he fell off his stool. Laughed and rolled right out of school. Down the stairs and finally stopped till he got tickled by a cop. And all the more he kept giggling, all the more folks kept tickling. He shrieked and screamed and rolled around. Laughed his way right out of town. Through the country down the road, he got tickled by a toad. Passed up the mountains across the plain. Tickled by the fallen rain, tickled by the soft brown grass, soft brown grass, tickled by the clouds that pass, giggling, rolling on his back. He rolled on the railroad tracks, rumble, rumble, wh whistle, roar. Tom ain't ticklish anymore. <laughs> oh, oh, that is so bad. Oh, that is so bad. Okay, I can see, I can see, I can see how why like, some schools are like, uh, I don't want my kids reading this. Like, <laughs> I have read this over and over again, but I've not read it as an adult. And so like, I'm seeing things in a whole new perspective and I'm like, oh no, okay. But I'm sorry, just because one little thing, you shouldn't ban the entire book. Because this is pretty bad. Like, the the kid was so ticklish, people tickled him until he rolled on the train tracks and got smashed by a train. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Um, oh, gosh. See, I was ticklish as a kid. I was really ticklish as a kid. But, um, I got tickled out of my tickledness. I didn't get hit by a train though. I just got tickled too much to the point I wasn't ticklish anymore. Um, yeah, that, that's, that frustrates Jason so much. It's really funny. All right, anyways, next, the nail biter. Some people manicure their nails. Some people trim them neatly. Some people keep them filled, filed down. I bite them off completely. Yes, it's a nasty habit, but before you start to scold, remember I have never ever scratched a single soul. Well, that's good. I mean, but don't eat your nails. Um, yeah, don't, don't do it. It's not, it's a nasty habit. You get really sick if you, Bite your nails, you can 
my cousin had strep so much growing up as a kid because she bit her nails and I felt bad. So, alrighty, I think I'm gonna stop here. Uh, we are at page 100 and we have about, let's see here. About 79 more pages to go. But we are getting there. We're getting there. So I hope everybody is having a wonderful, amazing time with this storyline and this poems. And I hope you are enjoying my commentary. If not, just click away. I don't really care. Um, it's my channel. I do what I want. I say what I want. Um, I don't get to do that a lot of my life. Um, because I try and protect the people around me, protect their feelings and their thoughts and their hearts from me breaking them by what I think and feel and how I see the world because my family is a lot, a lot different than how I am. So my family is extremely religious where I'm more spiritual. And I see things in life a whole lot differently. Yes, I grew up Christian and I grew up um, in the church doing mission trips. I swore I was going to be a overseas missionary. Um, I had it all planned out in my life and then things have happened and we're going to go into a whole storyline on that one. It's going to be a long video, but I'm gonna do a video on that and how, what I grew up with to where I'm at now. So that's gonna be coming up. Who knows if it's gonna be this week, next week, or whenever, but it's gonna be on my channel at some point, so just keep an eye out. Um, I don't know what that was. That was just me being weird. Um, yeah, weird awkwardness. Anyways, um, I hope you have a wonderful day. Stay sweet and kind, and remember it costs nothing to give a compliment. Have a good one. Bye.